So it's 2023, and, you know, things are starting to wrap up as we get towards the end of the year. We got Thanksgiving right around the corner, maybe already here. Christmas coming up, and the New Year's for 2024. And we spent a long time talking about things like Nintendo Switch 2 and even debating, like, what's going to win Game of the Year and all of that stuff. But what's really exciting is that Nintendo is pretty much about to reveal something. I mean, when I say pretty much, it's almost a guarantee. We're about to get another big reveal from Nintendo before the end of this year. Now, why am I saying that? Well, it's pretty simple. We do have the Game Awards coming up on December 7th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, we'll be live streaming that and making a big event out of it and having a good time, but That's sort of besides the point, because what we're really interested in, beyond obviously who wins all the different awards, is what Nintendo is going to reveal. Because today I looked back at the last 10 years, going all the way back to 2013, to see what Nintendo has shown, revealed, and done at the Game Awards. And it turns out, you know... We haven't really been given Nintendo enough credit for what they do at the Game Awards. They actually have a pretty significant reveal every single year, but one time. And so chances are Nintendo's about to have yet another significant reveal heading into 2024. And if you think about it from a logical perspective, it makes sense. We only know about one brand new game next year. All the rest are ports, remakes, remasters, right? And that's... Princess Peach Showtime. That's it. That's like the only thing Nintendo has announced for 2024 that's actually brand new. So it would make sense for Nintendo to have a major reveal at this event. So before we get into what that major reveal is, I think we need to look back at the last 10 years and what Nintendo has done and then talk about the possibilities for what could be revealed because guys, this could be massive. Now, back in 2013, They revealed Cranky Kong for Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Probably the least exciting announcement out of all of them over the last 10 years. But this was a long time ago. This was during an era of Nintendo where Nintendo wasn't doing very well. So Cranky Kong for Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. How exciting. In 2014, they actually dropped a little bit of footage and new information on Mario Maker. And they show Breath of the Wild off-screen gameplay. But it's really the first time we actually saw gameplay for Breath of the Wild for the very first time at in at the Game Awards 2014. Remember, that game was revealed at E3 2014. In 2015, there wasn't any new games, but this was a bit of a unique situation for Nintendo. 2015 was unfortunately the year that the late president, Satoru Iwata, of Nintendo passed away. Um, It it probably just didn't feel right to be talking about games at the Game Awards that year. They did, however, get to do a massive tribute, a huge speech from Reggie Fils-Aimé. Remember, Iwata passed away to colon cancer that year. So it honestly, you know, made a lot of sense. He passed away very shortly after E3 that year. So it, it, it made a lot of sense, I think, for them to focus on a tribute to the late president, rather than focusing on games. But then 2016 came back, and you know what? They're like, hey guys, there's a new system coming out, and it's launching with Breath of the Wild. Let's show you a brand new trailer for Breath of the Wild. So that was pretty exciting. 2017 was maybe the most amount of things they've shown off in a given year. They revealed Bayonetta 1 and 2 were coming to Switch, plus they unveiled that Bayonetta 3 was in the works. That's awesome. They also dropped a brand new trailer for the Champions DLC with the announcement that it was going to be dropping immediately after the end of the Game Awards. Remember, Breath of the Wild won Game of the Year that year, which was just super exciting. You get the Game of the Year win, you get brand new story DLC immediately after the show ends. Man, it was a really, really great year for Nintendo when it came to the Game Awards that year. And by the way, something interesting to pay attention to, and 2017 sort of taught us this. So most of the years at the Game Awards, we only have Reggie fils in attendance, or we have, you know, now Doug Bowser, who's the current president of Nintendo of America in attendance. That's what it typically is every single year. 2017 was a bit different. Fujibayashi and AGL Numa were in attendance. Why? Because, well, Breath of the Wild won Game of the Year. So uh, pay attention to the crowd. We might be able to know ahead of time if we see Eiji Aonuma or and or Fujibayashi in the audience might be an indicator that Nintendo is planning to be on stage to accept the Game of the Year award. I'm just throwing that out there. 
hey, you know what? Nintendo usually doesn't have their developers in attendance, but they did for winning game of the year. So we'll have to wait and see. 2018, they unveiled Joker for at the Game Awards for Super Smash Bros. Really big announcement coming off the backs of Super Smash Bros. launching. Really, really cool. This just a really sweet announcement to pair with that big launch. 2019, Nintendo had a bit of a maybe a lighter reveal, but it was still a big exclusive game in Bravely Default 2. So a brand new exclusive game was announced for Nintendo Switch in 2019. In 2020, they did the Sephiroth reveal for Smash, and it actually kicked off the entire show. So Nintendo even advertised that this was happening. And remember, 2020 was the pandemic year, so kind of crazy. Nintendo was advertising that people need to watch the Game Awards, and then the Game Awards kicks off with that reveal. Pretty cool. Now, this is when we get to the year where Nintendo didn't show anything, and I think we can understand why it they didn't show anything. We're talking 2021. So the Game Awards 2021, Nintendo, is it's the only year at the Game Awards where they no-showed and they didn't bring any reveals of any kind to the show. Now, this is likely due to the impact of the pandemic. A lot of companies were dealing with a ton of game delays and we're pretty sure Nintendo is included in all of those companies. There were several companies who had showcased that the Game Awards in the past that didn't have games shown off at these Game Awards. So Nintendo wasn't the only one that didn't really bring the goods. 2021 was a bit light on announcements besides like Elden Ring. So yeah, we're just going to sit there and say, hey, you know what? I can understand why Nintendo no-showed at this particular event. But it didn't last very long because then we had last year where they announced a brand new Bayonetta game again in Bayonetta Origins. Oh, and by the way, people forget about this. They announced the Fire Emblem Engage DLC. That's right, Fire Emblem Engage that was launching in January. They have brought the DLC brand new trailer and all of that to the Game Awards last year. So every time I hear people tell me, oh, Nintendo doesn't do anything at the Game Awards, they don't care about the Game of the Awards. Yeah, they care so little. They've only advertised something at the Game Awards nine of the last 10 years, and the one year they didn't, we were dealing with the damn pandemic. So yeah, it's pretty safe to say Nintendo is going to unveil something. Sometimes that something's pretty big, like a Bayonetta 3, or a massive character in Smash Bros, or DLC, and yeah, sometimes it's something crazy, sometimes it's something a little smaller. So the point is Nintendo's going to bring something. We know it can't be Smash DLC, that's wrapped up. Can't be Mario Kart DLC, that's also wrapped up. Now before we dive into the possibilities, I just want to remind you that, hey, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you're really enjoying the content, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. Drop a like. We have a long goal here. Who knows? If you subscribe, maybe we'll give you some free Chips Ahoy cookies. That's right. We're switching it up today. So what the heck could Nintendo be bringing to this show? Well, there's a few interesting choices out there. Now, there's actually four really, really exciting things they could show. One of those exciting things, though, doesn't happen without the other. So we guess we could say three exciting things, but one of them's like double exciting. Is that, a, is that a way to explain this? I don't know idea. So let's get into what could be the exciting things they show off. And first off is one that we talk about quite a bit of our channel, and that's the possibility of a Zelda remake or remaster being shown. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Ocarina of Time, especially with its recent 25th anniversary. But it could even be like the much rumored but never announced by Nintendo ports of Twilight Princess HD and the Wind Waker HD. Again, so many insiders have said that the, these ports have been done. Is this when they bring it? Were they waiting for Tears of the Kingdom coming out, knowing it would probably be up for Game of the Year? And then, boom, hey, let's go ahead and drop in, you know, our Zelda remakes then. Have them be nice games that can help fill in the slate next year, get us all the way to Switch 2 and all that. I don't know. It could just be a possibility. You could also add a nice little mix in there with the Mario games all coming out, but... Who knows? Like, that is stuff we've talked about a lot and is a distinct possibility, and we definitely can't rule it out. Now, the second thing this could be that's really exciting would be a reveal of Metroid Prime 4 in terms of gameplay, like a real trailer. Rumors and reports have said that this game is pretty far along, if not almost complete. And, by the way, the last Metroid game they released was Metroid Dread, which was up for Game of the Year. So... Add that in that Metroid Prime Remaster dropped this year and held a very strong 94 Metacritic rating. It's safe to assume that if Metroid Prime 4 is planning to release in 2024, it's probably a Game of the Year candidate. And as such, revealing its first ever gameplay at something like the Game Awards, where the last Metroid game was literally one of the Game of the Year candidates, could actually be in the cards. We can't rule out this distinct possibility. And again, it's a game already announced for Switch, technically. 
So, you know, we can't, we, we can speculate on Switch 2 with it, but reality is it's already been announced for Switch. So it could be like a safe to show kind of game that's already known. It's on their financial reports every single time. We just haven't seen the damn thing. Maybe they were saving it for this event. Would be really cool heading into the next year knowing that we'd be getting Princess Peach Showtime and Metroid Prime 4 for sure. That would be pretty neat. Now, the third and most unlikely really exciting thing Nintendo could announce, and if it happens, we get a fourth really exciting thing. We're talking about the reveal of Nintendo's next system. Now, this isn't necessarily go super well for Xbox when they unveiled the Xbox Series X, uh, but I don't know that the Game Awards are really to blame for that system not being as successful as it was. I mean, the Game Awards gave it a ton of attention, and there was a lot of hype adding out of it. But it also was released in a year later. If Nintendo's system is actually going to come out in the next six months, a reveal at the Game Awards might actually be pretty exciting. And if it is revealed, there's a high likelihood the reveal would also be tied to the next major 3D Mario game getting shown off. Odyssey 2 or whatever the heck they make this thing be. Considering Mario Wonder is up for Game of the Year this year, along with four other awards and likely one guaranteed win, plus the Mario movies nominated as well, it just might be the right time to unveil said game, which is reported to be the major launch game for Switch 2. But again, it's only going to be revealed if Nintendo is ready to tease the Nintendo Switch 2, and we can't be 100% sure they are actually going to do that, as they have never done such a thing at this type of event in the past. Though, to be clear, the Game Awards is the one event every year that garners a significantly larger audience than Nintendo can garner on their own, and they may view it as a prime marketing opportunity. After all, only once in the last decade has Nintendo chose not to use this venue as a marketing tool of some type, and that was during a pandemic. Oh, and Nintendo happens to be the most nominated video game company at the entire show this year. So Nintendo's name and games are going to be constantly brought up all night long. Might be the perfect storm then to bring in the only announcement that could land hard right next to a likely reveal of Grand Theft Auto 6. This is a show that if you're going to bring it, you better bring it big. So yeah, if GTA 6 is being dropped here with the reveal trailer, the only other thing that could probably steal some spotlight would be the revealing of Nintendo's next system with a big Mario game. Of course, they could also do none of that. Nintendo mixes in different types of showings, so it could be something else that they decide to show off because it's highly likely they show something. So what could there be instead? Well, Obviously, DLC is possible. While they expressly said there's no DLC for Tears of the Kingdom, Nintendo has told white lies before to temper expectations and catch people off guard. So yes, Tears of the Kingdom DLC technically could be announced, and it's up for Game of the Year and other awards, so could make some sense. There could also be new DLC for games like Mario Wonder or even Pikmin 4. And by the way, we do have a big DLC coming for Splatoon 3 next year, and they could just show a new trailer with that, with all new content. Just keep in mind that they do have that DLC pack that they still need to advertise. So they might wait till the February Direct, but it is possible that they could happen here. Now, the other thing that could happen is an announcement of a new partner game, just like when we got Bravely Default 2 and Bayonetta 3. So they could announce a new project with Platinum Games, as an example, or any of their other partner companies, like, who knows, a new Hyrule Warriors related to Tears of the Kingdom, perhaps? After all, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is the best-selling Warriors game of all time, so I could see where Koei Tecmo would probably really want to partner up again, and they might have had a bigger heads-up this time around, so maybe there's something planned there. Uh, it could be anything. It could be another partnership with Square Enix for something. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that could be in that partner game, and that's something, obviously, you guys can discuss for yourself. Anyways, look, that's what I got for you today. That's what I'm bringing to the table. You guys let me know what you think about all of that. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime, and we'll catch you in the next video.